Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of the Tournament of Champions on the A-Show on CKCC Radio. Matt Durline, uh, soon to be Chris Decker, taking his dog out currently, but he said to get started without him. If you listened to last week's episode uh, featuring the Camp Evers reunion with Irish Kev Spencer and AJ Evers, we don't know the winner of that yet, so check out the Twitter at the A Show on CKCC because we are going weekly now to go through the Tournament of Champions. So that's where you'll have to get your results, not just for episode one of season two, but also for all of these Tournament of Champions episodes. I heard Decker yelling at Maggie. I wonder if he's back now. That's a no. So <laughs> what we'll do, <laughs> what we'll do is we will introduce the 1-8 matchup. And joining us tonight, the number one seed with 76.1% of the vote on his episode from At Odds with Wrestling, Longbox Heroes, and a host of other wrestling-related things, Joe Sposto. Joe, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me on, Matt and Chris. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, w- 1995 WCW at the time was a bit of a blind spot for me, but, um, you know, thanks to the no longer award winning World Wrestling Entertainment Network, but more importantly, all the different YouTube channels that put this sort of stuff up when it wasn't up on the network, I've kind of refamiliarized myself with a lot of this stuff. Awesome. And your opponent tonight at the number eight seed looking to play spoiler. Representing the tag team, the stepdads, the Rad Dad, Radley Belmont. Rad, how you doing tonight? Oh, I'm feeling very good. As you guys know, WCW is my wheelhouse. It's what I grew up on. Very excited. This is going to be a good time. And for those of you who have not listened uh, re- previously, what we are doing here is taking all of the season one winners, with the exception of me and my wife from the from the couples episode that we did and doing a single elimination tournament to decide who is the season one champion. I hear a microphone, so it sounds like Decker is back. Yeah, Matt's being modest. He did, he and he also didn't want Ashley to be taken on Adam Van. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been very interesting. Uh, it would have been both something. Could have done, they both could have done like 1984 war class. Ooh. <laughs> Well, well I, I mean, if you, if you heard if you heard on uh, at odds this week, I, I had said that one of those times, like I was going to shadow book it for Adam, where I was going to be in the room with him, like holding up cue cards of like who to draft and who not to do, <laughs> while he was doing it for anything that happened prior to like 1997. <laughs> well, if you ask Adam, uh, wrestling was invented in 1990, so prior to that, there's nothing to draft. Well. You know, and that's the thing, Radley, I don't know how old you are, but I'm an old man. I've been watching wrestling for a long time. But, you know, the argument can be made that, like, 1990, you know, um, the the pinnacle being WrestleMania VI with Hogan Warrior is technically where wrestling began for a lot of people. You know, there's people that grew up in the 80s during the Hulkamania era and and maybe waned off a little bit. And then, like, that Warrior Hogan thing at Mania, like, inspired, like, one whole group of people to become wrestling fans or even wrestlers. And then you have the Attitude Era. So it does come in waves and stuff, or it did at one point. But That's 100% true, because I was, six months after that, I was uh, Hogan Earthquake. That was the first few that I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to note that Radley is way younger than we are, Joe. (laughs) Okay. I'm a, I didn't I'm want to expose this gimmick of being a, a step uh, one thing to be a dad, but another thing to be a stepdad. You know, <laughs> I keep it ambiguous, but you know, <laughs> you're 28 to 45, the most coveted demo of them uh, all. Oh yeah. <laughs> Depending on the promo, I have one step kid or multiple step kids, and of all ages, and it just works Dep- out that way. Depends on the town. Very, uh, yeah. you know, territorial wrestling of you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. How about Grizzly Redwood of you? Or or Grizzly (laughs) Smith of you? (laughs) That was not (laughs) close. That's very different. (laughs) Well, Grizzly Redwood didn't have a whole section of Beyond the Mat dedicated to him. But can you imagine if it did? Despite the fact that Beyond the Mat came out well before Grizzly Redwood was even thinking about becoming a professional wrestler. Um, 
And one thing I'd like to say, Chris, is one thing that I really like about this tournament is how the different parts of both of our wrestling careers are really going to intersect within this tournament. Like, if you look back at my really, really early years, there's a good chance that Joe Sposto is at the same show that I'm on. (laughs) Like, way back in the day. For Where, sure, from like two, like ninety nine, two thousand, up to like you know two thousand ten ish. Yeah, and and then even then after that, like back into like other local promotions that you had a hand in sparingly, or even just two years ago at LVAC. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, sure, sure. Um, where oh, Radley, Radley be the, uh, uh, I was gonna say that'll be the episode that we get Jerry on. He books LVAC two thousand nineteen. <laughs> Good luck getting Jerry to do anything, <laughs> especially oh, this well, not the date, not not the date and timestamp when we're recording this. But Jerry's very busy right now. <laughs> and if you want to see the things that Jerry is very busy with, you can go to independentwrestling. Oh, that was smooth, Matt. <laughs> Use the code Matt, word draft. Matt read the script beforehand. He knows what's going on. <laughs> this whole podcast is scripted out. It is. It, it's like um, it's like a Vince Russo WCW, except for the parts that were a shoot. Right. I'm gonna go. Put, I'm gonna go put my San Francisco Giants jersey on for those segments alone, <laughs> <laughs> so no one could tell in this audio podcast. <laughs> and likewise, where Joe was really around during the earlier part of my career, and the past few years, I've gotten to know the stepdads pretty well, and through True Wrestling and GSW, I have now interacted with the stepdads quite a bit. So it's cool to see those pieces, like, intertwining. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's all about you, is what you're saying. This whole tournament is about you guys. Uh, Very (laughs) false. This is the least about us that this show is ever going to be, and it's fantastic, because there's no prep work. There's, (laughs) like, I just hit record and moderate, and Decker moderates as well, and I have a list that apparently was not 100% complete, but that's okay. So now I may th- have asked you this before. Before we, I don't want to uh, interrupt the flow again. Um, who edits this? I do. Okay, so you do actually have more work to do. That's my favorite thing on being on someone else's podcast. Oh, you I don't, don't have to do the editing. Edit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's it's the best not having to edit. Like when we're done, we're done. I go to bed. You know, right. I don't have to. I'm not pulling clips and listening for, like, audio things and, like, oh, there was too much dead air there. I got to trim that out. (laughs) Uh, I say something inappropriate. Matt's like, oh, my God, the 45-minute mark. God damn it. (laughs) Right. I sit sit on my podcast. It's like, all right, this time frame, which I got to put this drop in, this drop in, this drop in. Okay, I fucked up there. We had an an audio issue there. Then I got to go back and listen to everything to make sure that it's clean. Oh. Right. So it is actually a lot more work for you there, uh, Matt, than you're letting on. But I don't have to put together a poorly designed card at, at the very least. Check. <laughs> Check. Um, so a couple things for the Tournament of Champions. Um, these are one-on-one matchups of me and Chris just moderating. The lower seed will draft first, and we do still have the wild card round of round seven. For the purposes of the tournament, there will be no trading. Okay. And also, we'll not do the unrestricted free agents. Whatever you draft, you draft. Hey, Matt, how about you moderate? I will be the fact checker. Okay. Works for me. That works well. Awesome. So, with that said... um, well, before will... you do that, I want to I want to uh, do my announcement of uh, what, I'm, uh, what I talked about it for. Just uh, very very quickly. Uh, so we're gonna go through this. Uh, we're gonna go through this tournament. So it'll be uh, seven shows, obviously, with uh, the quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, yada yada. Uh, after when we get started again, I'm throwing out a challenge to one Michael P. S. Roch. Um, Mr. Mr. Roch and I are uh, our acquaintances, our, our pals. He's been my promoter multiple times for interspecies wrestling. I am extending a challenge to him for doing an episode of the A show that is strictly with competitors in mixed martial arts. I want to do an MMA tournament um, card against him. And um, I have I have a lot of details I want to go into. Uh, Roch, if you listen to this or if you've never listened before and you're just seeing this because uh, I tagged you on Twitter on it, 
Uh, hit me up, see if you would be interested in this. If not, I will call you a coward until you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it's just an idea I had, and uh, hit me up a little later on that. Something we'll do after uh, the Tournament of Champions. So, with that being said, let us begin our first round match. Yes. So, the lower seed drafts first, and just as a reminder, you can draft a tag team or a stable together, but you must use them together. And if you draft a title, you have that title on your show with that person. So we open it up to Radley Belmont. You are on the clock that does not exist. <laughs> All right. So first pick, I'm going with the big guy, WCW World Heavyweight Champion Hulk Hogan. Good. You can have him. Without the, t- <laughs> um, without the title, that's fine. I'm taking, uh, as my first pick, the Macho Man Randy Savage. All righty. I actually do have a stopwatch going right now, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my next pick then, I'm taking Lex Luger. Ooh, that's just one of your many allocades. <laughs> <laughs> my next pick is going to be with the U.S. title, Sting. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take Hawk. Oh, talk As alone. Of, of the Road Warriors, Hawk? Uh, Yep, that's right. Not not the bird. I don't need the bird. Just the man. <laughs> For my next pick, I am going to take Eddie Guerrero. Oh, okay. All right. That brings us to round four just for the sake of keeping track to make sure we get to the wild card. This is so much faster than usual. I will take Sabu. Okay. Wait just a second. I have a list I'm updating myself. Oh, yes, yeah, Sabu. Did, that was when he had a small run, right? Yeah, September mm-hmm. to, like, October. <laughs> now, now I, have to, again. I have to ask, and Chris, I may need you to fact check this, and I don't want to oh. tip my hand too much. Oh. I want to take for my fifth, or uh, this is fourth pick, right? Yes. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, with the television title, I'm going to take Arn Anderson. Title. You guys continue on. I will look this up. That I don't need. The next one I might need your help on. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so that one's out. Um, I'll take Ming. That does change things a little bit for me. That's okay. Now, Chris, I'm going to have to ask you to double check. I want to take for my fifth pick, this fifth, right? Yes. Austin, was he still managed by Colonel Robert Parker in 1995? Give me one moment, I will bring this up. Because if he was, I'm going to take Austin with Parker. If not, I could do him as a separate draft pick down the road. Let's see, Colonel Robert Parker. Let's see here. Years. Uh, like I said, continue continue on. We can we can make the addendum here uh, if we if we. Um, if there needs to be changes made. Well, actually, because that could affect Rad's, ne- right. Rad's upcoming pick. Oh, oh right, right, so. right, right, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, let me look. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, Decker's on the clock. <laughs> no, I'm on the goddamn clock. You know, uh, if, if it's easier, I'll just throw, I'll, I'll get my commentators out of the way now. Uh, is it okay to do a three-man booth? Because I feel like that's like half the people in commentary that year. Uh, WCW pretty regularly had the three-man booth, so yeah, we can allow I mean. that. Okay, so I'm going to take the three-man booth of Bobby Heenan, Eric Bischoff, and Tony Scavone. Okay. So... So Tony's gone, Eric is gone, and Bobby Heenan is gone? Yeah, Bobby Heenan, yeah. Okay. I think Bischoff is one I missed on the list, so... Is one that you missed in the list, and that's... Quite all right. Steve Austin, make an appearance. Make an appearance. All right, let's see. Pin by... Ooh, this isn't looking good. All right, usually it's got the guys with him. That was his return after an absence. So I'm looking here, and again, it's uh, a match from WCW Saturday Night in April. 
Okay, I'm in where March. Where Austin comes out with Colonel Parker. Oh, 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 oh okay. Hmm. We got some Colonel Parker here stuff here. And uh, then, okay. Confirm, confirm. Colonel Rob okay. Parker was with Steve Austin. Okay, okay. I I see where you're going with this, by the way, after your last pick. Uh, maybe. I, I, I see something. <clears throat> no, go ahead. Okay. So, oh, hang on. So you took your commentator, so I'm good to go, but I do need someone for my number six pick, who is actually very crucial to my card, and that would be Mean Gene. Hmm. Whoa. All right, we have hit our wild card right now, the 13th overall pick. All right, Radley, you are up. Uh, wild card time. I am picking NWA World Heavyweight Champion Dan Severn. What? <laughs> <laughs> the wildest of wild cards. I, I, I'm in a similar boat, I guess. Um, my pick is going to be the World Wrestling Federation champion, Brett the Hitman Hart. All right. Nice. Holy All smokes. Right. So, I'll take Ric Flair. Okay. All right. Crazy that Flair lasted that long, but it is what it is, right? you know? Well, people are going to take what they're going to take. Okay. So, my next pick is going to be just Booker T. Whoa. <laughs> In 95. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll take Vader. All righty. These pick times are starting to get longer and longer now. We're averaging about 17 seconds per pick. Oh, jeez. My next pick is going to be the natural Dustin Rhodes. <sighs> Ooh, chef's kiss for that one. I'm, Good pick. I'm very... I had an idea for that. I'm very glad I went the opposite direction already. Uh, natural Dustin Rhodes. Yeah. Uh, I'll take Jushin Thunder Liger. Alrighty. Okay, hang on one second here. Okay. I'm updating my list. I apologize. Alrighty. Oh, no worries. Okay. For my 10th pick, I'm taking the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. Whew. That's right. You were you literally just took my next pick. Hold on. <laughs> Dusty was lower on the list. And yeah. as I'm drafting, he kept moving up and moving up and moving up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh boy, I gotta grab him now. This is sealed with a kiss, baby, and let's oh. make a deal, Dusty too. Ah. That changes things. Hold on. Give me give me a second. Um I'll just take the giant. Or no, uh, hold, uh, hold giant. on, hold on. <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I'm switching it, I'm switching it. Uh-oh. I'm switching it. Same, the giant, you can take it. Uh, Scott Norton. Ah, nice. Oh. Scott Norton. This is how, this is how deep my madness went. Scott Norton not on my list because Ice Train was on excursion in Germany for the entire year of 1995. <laughs> I really wanted some fire and ice action on my card, but unfortunately not a roster member during the year. I was so happy I saw me some ice train last night on some WCW Saturday night. I was very excited. Okay. So, okay, I moved him there. Um, let us do... We're going to change things up just a little bit. I can move him down here. For my 11th pick, as a tag team, I'm going to take Ben Juan Malenko. Okay. Oh, wonderful. I should have held off on Norton and got Benoit then. Shoot. Uh, uh, I'm going to take... I'll take the Giant now. Why not? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah. For my 12th pick, I'm going to take uh, Regal. Just Regal? Just Regal. Was this um? Was this the, the build on D years? No, I was. It was pointed out to me, but by the time '95 rolled around, um, done because gone. Yeah, will I? I I was called on the carpet by mixing up Sir William and Jeeves. Oh. Same person. Yes, yes. I blamed it on my third generation VHS copy that I was watching uncensored on. 
It's okay. I thought they were the same person too when I was listening to that the other day. He was there. He was there during Slambury '94. That's all you need to know. The the greatest pay per view WCW ever put up. That brings us back to Rad. All right. Um, I'm going to take Brian Pillman. Wow, you went late. Yeah. I mean, it's a stacked roster. Oh, it's a crazy stacked roster. Uh, so just hitting right down the line, uh, 13, I'm going to take DDP. Uh, I'm going to take Johnny B. Bad. And we've hit some stalling in the 14th round. It's not like, it's not hit the bottom of the barrel, but it's, it's a, these are, this is a hard card, man. Okay. Uh, and again, tipping my hand a little bit. Uh, as a team, I'm going to take Otani and Tenzon. Nice. I think I'm done. Oh. I think I'm good. Yeah. Bradley Belmont is out. He is done drafting. I got a lot mm-hmm. more to go. <laughs> Uh, so... Uh, you know what? You actually, you know, I'll take one more. Okay. My bad. I'll take one more. Jean-Paul Levesque. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay. Uh, so, and again, at this point, I'm just going to rattle them off. Um, with the tag team championships, I'm taking the Nasty Boys. Ooh, they were good then, man. Yeah, okay. solid year for them. Allentown's finest. <laughs> um, I am also going to take Fit Finley. I'm also going to take as the Avalanche, the Avalanche. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> okay. God damn, the Avalanche, as, the Butcher, and uh, okay, God, Taskmaster. That was, as that was Big Stark Bubber, I'm taking Big Bubber. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not done. Oh, this is a plan right here. Yeah, some scheme. Some scheme in here. <laughs> okay. Um, the next couple are just going to be some quick hitters, right? Um, and you'll see why I'm doing it, because we're done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go for so broke. I am going to take, and I'm going to just, I'm going to take Duggan. I'm going to take... Uh, the Broad Street Bully. Oh, Broad Street Bully was in or WCW? Black Top Bully, Black Top Bully. Uh, Black Top. Barry Darso, okay. Barry Darso. I was going to say, there's a little bit of Devers. Yeah, yeah. He's not drafting Tony Stetson. <laughs> Tony Stetson had a hot run in 95, he just wasn't here. <laughs> uh, Alex Wright. Okay. I'm going to draft... I'm Okay, so I'm also going to draft Brad Armstrong... And one half of Men at Work, Chris Canyon. Oh, fuck. I forgot Canyon was Men at Work. Yeah. Oh, and man. Last but not least, I have to take my commentary team. Um, I already have Dusty as I need him. Uh, if I need him. Uh, I'm going to take the Professor Mike Tanay and uh, Larry Zabisco. Oh, no love for Chris Cruz. Nope. He could, he could call the uh, Maryland State Athletic Commission on his own damn time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a story I have not heard, and I don't know if I need to, but that's great. Re- oh, real short story. When they were when AEW was still running live shows, and they did, like, one of the Kenny Moxley matches. Yeah. With, mm-hmm. like, all the weaponry and whatnot. He oh, is that him? Board. Yes. Oh. oh. Chris Cruz, you disappoint me. Uh, Damn, I held him in high regard for when worlds collide. Yeah, he's he's used up a lot of that goodwill, my friend. <laughs> I always remember Chris Cruz for one thing and one thing alone. They used to do the WCW All Nighters on TBS. Oh, that's right. And one of them, Chris Cruz, literally just hid behind a couch for hours wearing a Vader <laughs> mask. <laughs> And got paid to do it. All right. So oh, we I got hope uh, so, so just uh, since I already said I was done, I I will just let him go off. But uh, oh, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. we're still here. Okay. Sorry, I, something's beeping on my end. Uh, can I grab Paul Orndorff as well? Yeah, go for it. All right. Oh, thank you. That was a gimme. All right. Yep. I, that 
That's that's going to be the one that wins me the tournament. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so now for the segment that Decker loves, and because I have the list, I'll go through it. It's called yeah. "You're Not Getting Booked." Oh yeah, I was going to say I'm like I don't have that list in front of me. That might be a big list. Go ahead. But I do. And here's who's not getting booked: Scotty Riggs, Kimberly, Marcus Alexander Bagwell, Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker, Paul Roma, Eve Ed Sullivan. That's a shame. Hugh Morris, <laughs> Earl Robert Eaton, the Gambler. That fucking Gambler again. <laughs> gambler gets no love. Did he have like a ten year contract? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who is never got paid? <laughs> he did. lived in the building. Well, I mean, he kept gambling his paycheck away. That's how they kept him employed. <laughs> <laughs> Disco Inferno, the One yeah. Man Gang. Kamala, Jimmy Hart, Stevie Ray, King Curtis of the Dungeon of Doom, oh. Mr. JL, on commentary, Steve Mongo McMichael, Medusa, Kurosawa, Sonny Ono, Sergeant Craig Pitbull Pittman, the Yete, oh, the Yete. VK Wall Street, uh, Sister Sherry, I think she was at that point. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. Harlem Eat. Kinsuke Sasaki, Dick Slater, Kevin Sullivan, Squire Dave Taylor, The Barbarian, Lieutenant James Earl Wright, The Patriot, The Renegade, Teddy Long, Joey Maggs, Bunkhouse Buck, and The Butcher slash The Zodiac. That's okay. He's allowed yeah. not to be booked. Yeah, they're all right. <laughs> so with that said, we'll let you listen to some commercials for some other podcasts. We'll be right back with the cards here on episode um here in round one, match one of the Tournament of Champions on the A Show on CKCC Radio. I'm Jason. And I'm David. And we're the host of the Non North Sports Podcast. We're the home of sports talk for everyone. Join us bi weekly as we talk about the happenings in sports. You can find the non Other Sports Podcast on Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever else you find your podcasts. Hi, this is Anthony from the IWEP Network. We're a collection of weekly podcasts that vary in all different types of topics. We can be found on all social media, as well as any podcast or music app that you may use, as well as YouTube. We go live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch every Friday and Sunday. Here's a lineup of our five shows that you may be interested in. Interviews with Everyday People. Interviews and conversations on a positive note and just getting to know each other. Everyone has a story. Bangin' Beers podcast, beer reviews, hanging out with some friends, and much more. Truth behind illusion. Are you into ghosts, monsters, conspiracy theories, and more? Then this show will be for you. Tornado Tag Podcast. Pro wrestling stories, news, and show reviews. We love supporting indie wrestling, so come check us out. Not Cool in High School Podcast. A pop culture show where we cover movies, television, comic books, and video games. A weekly topic. So come hang out with us. We would love to hear from you. Follow us on all social media, and we'll see you soon. It's the most successful independent wrestling promotion of this generation. It's the place where the stars of today made their name. Now get the inside story of Ring of Honor from those that lived it with an honorable mention. Join Ring of Honor alumni Shane Hagedorn and his co-host Jeff Schwartz as they break down a classic Ring of Honor event every Tuesday and get the -the behind-the-scenes scoop and inside stories that you won't hear anywhere else. An honorable mention, available every Tuesday. Tuesday on your favorite podcast platforms. For exclusive bonus content, plus early ad-free access to every show, check out patreon.com slash an honorable pod. Greetings, folks. Do you like beer? Do you know who I am? Maybe not. My name's Kev, also known as Irish Kev. And then my dear friend Rick and myself actually really were supposed to have a cool promo for our beer review podcast known as the Hooligans of Hops, where Rick and myself take you through a drunken journey of all of the beers that we try. On a scale point twenty five to 5 being the best, we talk about the best and worst beers we've had on the show. In between, you hear sports banter, some wrestling, and I don't know anything that happens when we get drunk. So check out our show on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple iTunes, Buzzsprout, and anywhere you can get your podcast sources. 
We'll try not to get drunk next time and do something for you. But here's the promo. Thanks. Thank you to our friends at Other Podcasts for those exceptional promos. We are back here, round one, matchup one, on the A-Show Tournament of Champions here on CKCC Radio. Matt and Chris hanging out with you, along with Joe Sposto, the number one seed, Radley Belmont of the Stepdads, the number eight seed, and the gentlemen have had some time. They've put their cards together, and of course, whoever drafts first announces first. So, Rad, we'll throw it to you for your 1995 WCW card. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, it is September 4th, 1995. Welcome to the debut of WCW Monday Nitro. We're at the Mall of America in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, well done. Our, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Our commentary team, none other than Bobby the Brain Heenan, Eric Bischoff, and Tony Schiavone. And we're going to kick it off as high as we possibly can. This feud has been running high. We've seen weapons. We've seen a lot of heat. And now we're going to get the blow off right now. It's Falls Count Anywhere. Flying Brian Tillman takes on Sabu. Whoa. (laughs) We're going eight to ten minutes. And it's Falls Count Anywhere, which means they're going all over that mall. (laughs) Possumania. Exactly. They're, they're brawling in front of the pasta mania. They're brawling up the escalator. They're going all over the place. Sabu ends up diving off the balcony in front of the ring onto Brian Pillman. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, we're kicking off hot and heavy. This is where the big boys play. With <laughs> <laughs> Sabu wins the match. Eight to ten minutes. That's how we kick it off big time, but we are not done yet. We got so much more. How about the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. We're just going into the first hour. We're going to give you the world title match right now. None other than Hulk Hogan, everyone's favorite, even though I hear a lot of smattering of booze out there. <laughs> He's taken Thanks, on the, the current fan favorite WCW legend, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Oh, We've my seen God. This, oh, yeah. We're going big. That's the debut of Nitro, baby. We got to go big. Hogan versus Flair, we've seen it before, but this time it's a little different. There's a little less pomp and circumstance for Hogan. When Hogan comes out, it's very obvious the Minnesota crowd, they're booing him. It's not like AWA Hogan anymore, and they hate that. Flair comes out, gets some cheers. He's playing up a little more, starting to look a little bit more like a face out there. People are expecting an epic battle. This thing only goes four minutes, because... Once Hogan starts getting the offense, the crowd boos real heavy, and Hogan cannot stand it, which gives Flair just enough time to get some chops in and get some cheers. Next thing you know, they're looking outside. There's somebody in the aisle. Who could that put? He he doesn't work here. It's Lex Luger. All right. (laughs) Continuing continuity. I like it. Absolutely. Lex Luger in that puffy white shirt he had just came right out of a romantic novel. I don't know what's going on there. (laughs) He's standing there. He's staring it down. And right as Tony Schiavone says, we should, we got to go to commercial break. This is where the universe changes. Lex Luger rushes to the ring and attacks Ric Flair. Hogan and Luger attack Ric Flair in the middle of the ring. Immediate disqualification, Flair wins by DQ, but that doesn't matter. Lex Luger debuting, aligns himself with Hulk Hogan as he puts his finger up and writes NYC towards the camera. Yelling, oh uh, yelling about New York over and over and over again. Bischoff tries to ignore it. Heenan thinks it's great and won't stop talking about New York. <laughs> talking about... Ellis Island. <laughs> Talk, talking about the old days, talking about how you can never trust Hulk Hogan. I've been telling you all along. Yada, yada, yada. All right. Everything starts to calm down. Okay, we're, we're getting back into it now. Let's have a nice, nice match. It's Vader versus Scott Norton. Tight. This is where, <laughs> this is where the big boys play. The big boys, they're about to play. Vader and Norton beat the shit out of each other for a good ten minutes. <laughs> As they should. As, As they, they should. absolutely should. Dur- <laughs> finishes Vader hitting that Vader bomb twice on Scott Norton to get the v- definitive victory. Damn, what does Scott Norton do? 
<laughs> he's new. He's the, he's the rookie there, brother. Vader looks like an absolute beast. He hasn't had the WCW for, title for a long time. He hasn't had any title for a little while. He wants a championship, and he destroys Scott Norton to the surprise of everybody. He wants a belt. He even throws a referee out of his way as he leaves. He wants a championship. Mm. Oh, this just in. Eric Bischoff hears something in his ear. We have a main event announced, folks. Hulk Hogan and Lex Luger are going to team up tonight, apparently calling themselves New York. They're going, <laughs> they're going up against Ric Flair and a mystery partner. Oh, boy. Heenan thinks that it's just a mystery partner because he doesn't have a partner, or he's still looking for a partner. We don't know. It's definitely not the gambler. We know that. <laughs> We come back from commercial. Now it's time for some high flying, some fast action. We got Jushin Thunder Liger taking on Johnny B. Bad. Johnny B. Bad, underrated at this point, really, taking on a great Japanese legend. They go, it, let's see, they go uh, 12 to 14. How about that? We really give them the time to go on this normal television broadcast. Jushin Thunder Liger with the Liger bomb for the win. Meanwhile, Eric Bischoff just ranting and raving about how great this match is, how there should be some sort of, like, division for people in this weight class. We should really think about that. You know, these 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 light heavyweights, these, uh, I don't know, cruiser weights, they, they should have their own division. This is pretty awesome. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll run, you know, we'll send it up the flagpole, see what happens. And now we're at our originally scheduled main event, now co-main event. The and WCW is all about where the big boys play and the big boys are coming, including the NWA, and that means the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Dan the Beast Severn. He issued an open challenge, and of course, only the roughest and toughest would take on the Beast. We got Dan Severn versus Ming. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. This match goes a solid ten minutes. It's as brutal as you would want it to be. Dan the Beast Severn able to pass out Ming in the middle of the ring retaining the NWA title. Ming ain't tapping out, but he's going out. And as Dan holds up the NWA belt, he's screaming for more challengers. He's screaming about the NWA. And as he turns around, Vader is tossing Ming out of the ring and staring down Dan the Beast Severn. Ooh, baby. Eric Bischoff announces, in two weeks... We will have Vader versus Dan Severn for the NWA World's title right here live on WCW Nitro. Now it is time for our originally unscheduled main event. It's a tag team encounter. These New York boys, as they call themselves, New York, Hulk Hogan and Lex Luger taking on Ric Flair and his mystery partner, a man that just... I don't know, four hours earlier, two hours earlier, he would never have teamed up with. We have the Giant. The Giant All being right. such a huge, huge guy. The guy that beat Flair for the WCW title before. This is the guy that might be able to even the odds for Flair. They wrestle uh, a solid 14 minutes. We're talking a lot of heat. Flair getting that sympathy. Giant getting that hot tag. Giant coming in, taking on... That Hogan taking on Lex, going back and forth. Lex tries to pick up the Giant, no to no avail. And just as the Giant goozles both men in that double choke slam, well, here comes Hawk. Hawk comes in attacking <laughs> the Giant and attacking Flair. What? We got ourselves a disqualification as Hawk, as Hawk has joined New York in the middle of the ring. To the, to the anger of the crowd as they continue to beat on Flair and the Giant. Meanwhile, Bobby Heenan, laughing his ass off at commentary, accidentally reveals that he's the mastermind behind all of it. Because since day one, if you can't beat him, join him. So why not join Hulk Hogan in, his, in their, in their quest to show these fans that Hogan deserves better, just like Bobby Heenan deserves better. It's his New York. And as Bischoff gets in his face, out comes Paul Orndorff decking Bischoff. 
Paul Orndorff, <laughs> formerly being managed by Bobby Heenan in New York, <laughs> protect it, protects Bobby Heenan as they go to the middle of the ring, throwing gar- people throwing garbage as they go up the hall, the aisle. And there they stand. New York, Bobby Heenan, managing Hulk Hogan, Lex Luger, Hawk, and Paul Orndorff. But as Heenan gives all the allocades and the accolades that they've had in other places, you know, upstate and up in New York, we have our final image as three armies stare each other down. In the middle of the ring, you have the faction New York. Next to the stage stumbles out an injured Eric Bischoff next to Johnny B. Bad, Jushin Thunder Liger, Brian Pillman, Sabu, the Giant Flair, and all the other members of the WCW roster. And in the crowd, the one-man army holding up his belt, Dan the Beast Severn yelling, The NWA is coming. As Tony Schiavone tells us, we're desperately out of time. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is this is the point of the show we're going to call press conference. <laughs> now, <laughs> Bradley. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, so after Shane Douglas shits on the NWA, they're like, well, let's just go back to WCW. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, they patch things up. They patch things up. It's fine. <laughs> uh, all all the NYC guys being um, Minneapolis guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are in Minneapolis. <laughs> we, <laughs> Minneapolis. Like, yeah. <laughs> we could just go like a time zone over. We'll all right. I, 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 mean, I, I, I could have just called them the AWA. I didn't think of that. <laughs> Was Burn still alive? You could have had him as your mystery draft person. I mean, he picked NYC because, could you imagine Luger standing there spelling Minneapolis with his finger? Oh, He'd still be there now. <laughs> NYC stands for the new young crew. Oh, <laughs> Radley, when you drafted your thing, I was I had my fingers crossed for a Hogan versus Dan Severin match on the uh, – your show to get oh, sure Hulk Hogan, but the tease is there. Dan Severn can still face Hogan at some point. At some, oh. Absolutely, absolutely. That was that was like a, a a third or fourth backup for sure. Bischoff coming out with all of his guys, and there stands alone the the, the homicidal genocide. <laughs> <laughs> I, the image, Point up the image of the wall. He's like, the oh, image of like any I just love the image of like Eric, young Eric Bischoff with Sabu on one side and like Ric Flair on the other other side. (laughs) And with like Liger right behind him. Like this weird hosh posh of people. These are my guys. (laughs) Oh yeah? You're from New York? Well, I've got Sabu. And um, (laughs) the giant. And Jushin Liger. He's from Japan. (laughs) Sure. Uh, the world championship that. wrestling, it makes sense. I forgot, to mention, I forgot to mention Jean-Paul Levesque is somewhere in that crowd, too, because I didn't need him anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I love the idea that, for no reason, Paul Orndorff joins, other than he's like, ever in 86, <laughs> like, <laughs> he didn't buzz. Yeah, W.W. Paul Orndorff was, like, the most gullible man, though. <laughs> you, you're not wrong. <laughs> Like, he's definitely taking the fall in all their eight-man tags, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we move along uh, to Joe with his presentation of his card. All right. From the Norfolk Sco- Scope in Norfolk, Virginia, sold-out crowd, 1,400-plus, very little papering here. Norfolk was still a hot crowd for WCW even until the waning days. It's the Clash of the Champions. It's not numbered. They don't number them anymore. Uh, and it doesn't have a special title. It's just Clash of the Champions live on TBS, right? All right. Um, our commentary team is Mike Tanay, Larry Zabisco, and the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Uh, Mike Tanay is laying things out for what we have. We have 
uh, three title matches planned, but as you know how tumultuous the world of professional wrestling is, the comings and goings in the world of professional wrestling, who knows what sort of matches we'll see by the end of this evening. Larry Zabisco not paying attention as he's back to the camera as he's taking a bow to the crowd, the glory <laughs> hog that he is. Dusty oh, says, favorite. well, Mike, living legend, I can only be here. I'm not going to do a Dusty impersonation. Um, it's a disservice to the dream. Uh, he says, I'm only going to be here with you for a little bit because I got business myself to take care of. Uh, business is picking up. Business is looking good. And business is going on later tonight. And they throw to the ring for our opening contest as the television title is on the line as double-A Arn Anderson, uh, conspicuous by his absence, not joined by his manager, Colonel Robert Parker, defends the title against Lord Stephen Regal with uh, chives, as Dusty would call him. Uh, it's a heel versus heel matchup, but again, we... You know, Regal's a top contender for the television title. Arn kind of plays a little bit more babyface-ish during the course of the contest. Uh, I don't think these two cross paths many times. I think maybe one at the least that I can think of. Uh, match goes about seven minutes. At about the eight-minute mark, someone jumps out of the crowd and attacks Regal. And that, of course, would be the debuting at this point. Uh, Fit Finley, the Belfast Bruiser, with his uh, big giant shoulder pad leather jacket and his graying mullet and missing teeth. He just starts pounding the shit out of Regal. Arn doesn't know what the hell's going on. He wants to take, the, he's happy to take the win by disqualification, but he goes and he tries to see what the hell's going on, and Finley gets up in Arn's face. Arn ain't one to back down from a challenge. These two square off. Regal gets back up to his feet, turns Finley around, and they start brawling, and Arn's like, that's good enough for me. He takes the title, and he's out of here. Now, we head up to the rampway, the little, the little setup there, and mean, by God, Gene, is there with the Macho Man Randy Savage, and he says, Randy, you and I have known each other for a long time, through a lot of different companies, a lot of different faces, and you had a scheduled opponent for this evening, and he skipped town. I don't know if he was afraid, I don't know what his deal was, but Macho Man, the WCW Board of Directors have laid something out very interesting and I want you to tell me if you agree to these terms. Uh-huh, yeah, Gene. So, uh, tonight, it's a wild card. It's up in the air. We're leaving it up to the fans. We're letting you decide. And Gene's like, that's right. If you call 1-900-909-9900 and put in the options, you, the fans at home, get to pick who the Macho Man's opponent is going to be. If you uh, look up the uh, Chiron here on the screen... You'll see option number one is Booker T. Option number two is Alex Wright. Option number three is Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Option, option number four is Eddie Guerrero. Option number five is the Blacktop Bully. And option number six is DDP. And I say all six, yes. So, folks, get your parents' permission. Only 99 cents a call. Option one, option two, option three, option four. You got less than two hours to make your voices heard. Who's going to get an opportunity of a lifetime to take on the Macho Man, the main event of Clash of the Champions, as we cut to commercial break? So we come back from commercial. Mike today is aghast. He's shocked at this turn of developments. They don't say the name of whoever it was who left to go to up New, up to New York. Maybe it might have been Hawk. Maybe it might have been Lex Luger. No one really knows who it was, but there's a lot of speculation. Dusty with a lot of double speak saying people are snakes in the grass and so forth. But now it's time for a tag team match with an international flavor. Already in the ring, the team of Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko, some newcomers here in World Championship Wrestling as they take on the Japanese contingent of Shinjiro Otani and Tenz Hiroshi Tenzon. Uh, as hard-hitting as a match as you would in the spots where it needed to be when Tenzon and Benoit were in there, as fast-paced and as ground-grappling as it is when Otani and Malenka were in there. Uh, the fans not really digging this one, but the action is strong enough that when it makes it to the dirt sheets, it gets about four and a half stars from all the people that matter in 1995. Uh, this match goes about ten minutes uh, with Otani doing a low blow behind the referee's back on Malenko and schoolboying him up so it at least gets two stars from one young man in the uh, greater Duryea or wherever area. <laughs> so uh, we go back to Gene, who is backstage like those old deals they would do in main events where 
you would have, like, the two locker rooms set up of, like, you could see the participants of who you could vote for. Gene tries to get a word with some of the participants that have this opportunity to take on the Macho Man tonight, but they're all arguing amongst each other. But you get a chance to see on screen Booker T, DDP, Eddie Guerrero, Alex Wright, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Blacktop Bully, Doug Dillinger and security and stuff are there to make sure no fisticuffs come to pass here during this segment. But again, it's just plug in the hotline one more time to make your uh, voice heard. Uh, next up, we have, I guess you would call it a mixed tag match, but again, it is what it is, uh, as the tag team of stunning Steve Austin and Colonel Robert Parker take on the tag team of Dusty and Dustin Rhodes. Uh, as soon as Dusty and Dustin get into the ring, it's just a Pier 6 brawl, all four men are, are brawling, Robert Parker immediately runs out of the ring, he's scared, Dusty goes after him, we get, uh... Austin and Dustin in the ring. They start going at it pretty hot and heavy. They've got a very long-storied rivalry. Uh, Dustin gains control. He starts doing the flip-flop and fly. He throws Austin in the corner. He comes running in for a big clothesline. Austin sidesteps him. Dustin overshoots it, smacks his head on the the post. He's busted open, bleeding all over the place. Austin slaps on a chin lock as we cut to commercial break. We come back from commercial. Things have settled down on the outside. Colonel Robert Parker and Dusty are on their respective corners. Austin's still sitting on uh, Dustin in the chin lock, who's bleeding all over the place. And Austin's doing that thing where, like, the guy being the seated chin lock, and the guy doing the chin lock would, like, kind of push himself up to add a little extra pressure to the chin lock. Nobody does that anymore. That was good shit. Somebody bring that back. <laughs> well, in control, he brings, o- he brings Dustin over. He tags in Colonel Robert Parker. Robert Parker comes in, he's cock of the walk, he's strutting around, he gives a kick to Dustin, Dustin's laid out, he goes and he throws Dustin in the ropes, and he like very slowly charges in and gives him like a big clothesline, he, he's loving it, he's living the life, Dustin's down, he goes for a cover, but Dustin still keeps kicking out, Austin's like, bring him over to me, bring him over to me, Colonel Robert Parker makes the tag, he holds Dustin up so Austin can hit him, Austin reels, reels it, reels it, reels it. Dustin moves out of the way. Pop. Austin ducks Colonel Robert Parker. Austin's like, holy shit, what did I do? Dustin makes the slow crawl. Then he does the Ricky Morton roll, makes the tag to Dusty. Dusty comes in. House of Fire. Bionic elbows for everyone. Bionic elbows for everyone. Randy Anderson, the referee, he almost caught one. He got a little too close. (laughs) (laughs) Colonel Robert Parker. Boom. He takes one. He's down. Austin takes one, two, three. Doesn't go down. Does the flip flop and fly. Takes it on that fourth one. Austin does like a big, huge bump over the top rope. Not a disqualification. It wasn't the intent of the move. It was the momentum of the move that sent him over the top rope. So it's not a disqualification. So now Dusty sees the blood of his son on the ground. He sees the blood of his son all over that nice white suit of Colonel Robert Parker. And he points at him. And Colonel Robert Parker goes to run away. Dusty grabs him by the back of his pants. Pulls down Robert Parker's pants as Robert Parker tumbles out of the ring. And there's no underwear that can contain Robert Parker. So he's bare-ass naked trying to cover up <laughs> what God gave him. Plus a few extra ass. Dustin, uh, Austin goes and grabs his hat and covers up his junk. The two of them run up the aisle away. They both get counted out. Dusty and Dustin win. By count out, Austin and Colonel Robert Parker run up the uh, entryway. Uh, quick editorial. So now after podcasting with Brad... Uh, Joe and Matt, there's something in the water up here of, of people in Northeast PA that love the Ricky to Robert hot tag. Oh yeah, man! <laughs> like, yeah, I do, I, I do it like every other match, so. Nobody does it. That's another one that nobody does anymore. All these, all these kids need to watch like the old shit from like 84 to 86 mm-hmm. and just like steal one, I, I mean liberally borrow like one thing. And put it into your New Day repertoire, and, like, people will go out of their minds. Like, you'll see that gets just as big as a reaction as, like, six flips off the top rope, which is still really cool. But, like, you'll start to figure out, like, oh, okay, I can start mixing, like, this old stuff with the new stuff, and it'll work, you know? But, you know, nobody wants to do that. Everybody wants to be a a flippy-do, and that's all right. I like a flippy-do. Matt, you can uh, you can um, vouch for me about this love of the Ricky to Robert hot tag, right? Oh, oh yeah, definitely, a hundred percent. Oh man, it, it's just funny. It's just funny. All right, continue on. All right, so we come back from commercial, and on that same entrance way, Gene is there now. Uh, he's talking about the hotline one more time. He said they've got more calls in 
in the uh, in the last hour than they've ever had in the history of the hotline. If you call him tomorrow, he'll tell you how many people called today. Folks, eh, kind of get your permission if you want that one. But right now, he wants to bring out a man who had a match tonight and no longer has a match tonight, and that's the current U.S. champion, Sting. Sting comes out. Big woo, the whole thing, and Gene again, he says, they're dropping like flies around here, people coming, people going, but if there's one constant in the world of world championship wrestling, and that's you, Stinger, and Sting says, you know, I've been every champion there is here several times over, he goes, you think I've done it all here, but there's always something new, there's always something different in world championship wrestling, you never know what's going to happen, and hey, my opponent for tonight, he didn't show up, maybe he had better things to do, and in the middle of what he's saying... Oh, oh, wait a minute. Coming out through the entranceway, the current World Wrestling Federation champion, Bret the Hitman Hart, and he makes a beeline to Sting. He gets the mic from Gene. He says, you know, Stinger, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Watching everything you've done, you're a jam-up guy. I like what you do. And uh <laughs> you talk about... Oh, God. That's what Brett says. That's a, like perfect vocabulary. He says, uh, you talk about all the things that you've done here, you know, you look at this belt around my waist that tells you I've done everything that there is to do in the World Wrestling Federation, and I don't expect to come in here to be handed a title shot just because of this belt, but uh, if I know my World Championship Wrestling rules, that belt makes you the number one contender for the title. And if I could beat you for that belt, then maybe I could win this belt. So what do you say, Stinger? You got no one to play with tonight. I got no one to play with tonight. Here at the Clash of the Champions, I figure, what do you say we get it on? And Stinger says, you know what, Hitman? You got yourself a deal. I'll see you in that ring later tonight as we cut to commercial break. So, again, it's a wild and tumultuous night. Again, we go to a standby match at this point only because... You know, matches coming and going, and uh, we get Brad Armstrong taking on one half of uh, Men at Work, Chris Canyon. Good about five to six minute match. Canyon gets the win on a reversal of the Russian leg sweep. Brad Armstrong goes to snap it. Chris Canyon holds onto the top rope. Uh, Brad doesn't go down, spins him into the flatliner out of nowhere. And uh, Brad Armstrong, a little pissed off. Chris Canyon, probably with his first TV win in WCW at this point. Now. We get the re- the reveal. Gene comes out and he says, Macho Man. Macho Man's already in the ring. Macho Man comes out, the whole entrance, everything. Okay. So Gene says, now it's time for us to find out who won the 900 poll. Folks, I would never tell anyone to stop calling the 900 line, but at least stop <laughs> calling for that option. We don't want to be in a, a lawsuit. Spoiler, they end up in a lawsuit over this because it ends up being rigged. Um, <laughs> and the man who got picked by the fans of WCW to take on the Macho Man here at the Clash of Champions is none other than Eddie Guerrero. Eddie comes out. This is a huge opportunity. He's about four months into the company at this point. Maybe, not even. Macho Man, former world champion. I was hoping it could have been for the title, but doesn't work that way sometimes. Uh, feeling out process to start. Macho Man, of course, in control quite a bit. Maybe about two, three minutes in, Eddie starts to frustrate him with his speed. Macho Man powders the outside. At this point in the match, Macho starts to play a little bit more heel. Doesn't do anything underhanded, of course. Maybe a little bit slower on the breaks. Maybe a little bit longer in the corner. Maybe teasing a closed fist or not. But Macho Man is in control for the middle portion of this match. With Eddie continually kicking out, continually fighting out, continually showing that he could still hang with one of the big boys in WCW as we cut to commercial break. It's a two-segment match. We come back. Macho Man's still in control of this contest. Uh, and Macho Man goes for the, uh, like his version that like, eh, they call it like a reverse bulldog, but like that hooking clothesline that the Macho Man would do, right? Mm. So he d- hits that on Eddie, and then real quick, like Macho Man goes up to the top rope, goes for the big Macho Man elbow, Eddie moves out of the way at the last second. Macho Man crashes to the, to the, uh, the canvas. Now, this around that time where Macho maybe did, and they would lie and say he didn't have that elbow injury, and that's the elbow that he landed on. Referee's checking on him. Eddie slowly pulling himself up to his feet. 
looking around to see what's going on, looks over to the top rope, slowly climbs the top rope. He signals for the frog splash. Macho Man's made about halfway across the ring. Eddie jumps, hits the frog splash. Referee there, one, two. Macho Man kicks out. Son of a bitch. Eddie doesn't know he had the Macho Man right where he wanted, but Macho Man ain't getting back up. Macho Man doesn't think, it doesn't look like Macho Man's got a lot of fight left in him. Eddie goes to the top rope one more time. He knows one more frog splash will do it. He goes for the frog splash. Macho Man gets the knees up. Boom. Both men are laid out of the canvas. Referee putting the count on both men. Counting them down. We're up to seven. Neither man is really stern. We're up to eight. They've both rolled over to the ropes. Pulling themselves up on the rope by nine. We get to ten. Eddie's fallen. Macho Man's barely on his feet holding on the top rope. Macho Man wins. Hell of a matchup. Macho Man goes over, helps Eddie up to his feet. Eddie's got his fist clenched, but he's holding on the top rope. He thinks Macho Man's going to lay him out. Macho Man gives him a handshake, gives him a hug, raises his hand, and leaves the ring and lets Eddie have his moment. He didn't win it this time, but he came that close to beating one of the legends in professional wrestling. Well done. Yeah, Very thanks. good. Now it's time for our main event with the U.S. Championship on the line. Sting defending against the newly debuting World Champ- World Wrestling Federation champion, Bret the Hitman Hart. The Battle of the Sharpshooter versus the Scorpion Deathlock. As they're about to get into the ring, Sting gets on the mic and he goes, You know, Bret, this is your first night here, and I was nice enough to put my U.S. title on the line. And I don't know what that title really means here, but I've never held that title, uh... Why don't you put that belt on the line against me too? Winner take all. And st- and Ma- and Macho er, er, Macho Man Hitman just hands it over to the ref, nods his head, says no problem, and we're off. Bell rings, tight lockup right in the center of the ring. Sting's got the height advantage. Sting has got the power advantage. He backs Brett back into the corner. Clean break, no problem. They lock up one more time. Irish whip into the rope. Sting gets a big frog, gets over Brett, goes to do the drop toe hold. If you saw me. Retweet this gif the other day. It goes through the drop told onto Brett, and Brett just does a little skip over his legs and kind of looks at Sting. Says like, "You're gonna match. You're gonna match technical with me. You got to do better than that." All right. So Sting now is a house of fire. He just runs at Brett, fists and fire, fists and fire. Throws him into the corner. Goes for the Scorpion Deathlock or the the Stinger Splash. Sting rolls out or Macho Man. Or, uh, Macho Man. My mind is all over the place. <laughs> Brett rolls out of the ring. All right. Brett takes a little moment here, recollects himself. Trying to slow the pace down, even though Sting's got the height and the power advantage. He's also got the speed advantage. He has a song that says he's quick as a cat, and uh, he does this and he does that. He's as big as a boat. <laughs> all those things. <laughs> um, so, Brett comes back in. He tries to slow it down, test his strength sort of thing. Brett kind of sort of starts to play heel a little bit, a little bit stronger than we saw in Arn in the other match in Macho Man, where he's, you know, like, they go for the test of strength and he just boots him in the midsection. He's not breaking on five for the referee. Referee's got to pull him off the ropes when he has him in the corner. Brett knows this is not his crowd. Brett knows this is enemy territory. He knows he's got to dig down deep to to win this match. So he's in control, but he can't put Sting away. He is working over the lower back. He is working over the legs. One, to slow Sting down, but also to set him up for the sharpshooter. Brett goes for the sharpshooter in the center of the ring. He has the legs. He crosses them. And Sting uses his power to, like, do a full roll and send Brett flying. Brett careens into the referee, knocks Nick Patrick out. He goes to the outside. Now there's no referee. So now, finally with pants on, Colonel Robert Parker comes out. He's got Art Anderson. He's got Steve Austin with him. They come out. What the hell are they doing out here? Why are they getting involved in this matchup? They come down, and they start putting the beat down on both Sting and Bret Hart. Sting and Bret Hart both make their own comebacks. Both of them get tossed over the top rope. Colonel Robert Parker doesn't want to get pantsed one more time, so he takes his crew out of here. The referee comes to and sees all these guys, and he's about to call for the disqualification, and Sting says, no, 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 no way. There was no interference. They didn't get into the ring. Don't don't throw this match out. There needs to be a finish. There needs to be a winner. And with the referee calling it to the timekeeper saying, no, it's on, Brett connects with a low blow on Sting behind the referee's back. Oh, oh son oh of a man. bitch. What the hell is Sting doing? How could he do this to the Stinger? Sting falls down. Sting, in a world of hurt, Brett drags him into the corner. Brett drags him into the middle of the ring, puts the sharpshooter on him, and just leans back. 
Sting's not tapping out. Sting has been taking so much beating. Sting doesn't answer the call. His hand drops three times. Bret Hart is your new WCW US champion and WWF heavyweight champion. Now the number one contender for the WCW title. And Bret holds both belts up as the crowd of the Norfolk Scope is just booing the hitman here as they beat the hero of WCW, the Stinger. Dastardly wow. asshole. <laughs> so my as I as I teased it there, I wanted Macho Man with the belt because I was gonna have Eddie beat Macho Man for the belt. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, that was like my whole thing. Like I was glad I got the Eddie and Macho Man match, but if I got the belt, Eddie was gonna be the WCW champion in nineteen ninety five. Wow. You know? Yeah, like dude. let's fucking go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd have, and then he'd be working towards Brett and Eddie. Yes. Oh man, that would be awesome too. I saw that gift that you mentioned. I saw, I seen it today, and I said to myself, "I go, why the fuck does anybody shit on Bret Hart? This guy was a fucking genius." <laughs> you know what I mean? And and like he had shit like that that he would only do with other guys. You know, like like there's guys that like, and everyone's like, "Oh, Bret with the five moves of doom," and that's great. But, like, Brett had, like, seven to ten other things that he would do with just perfect. Then he had another seven to ten things that he would do just with, like, Jacques Rougeau. Then he had, like, another seven to ten things that he would do with just this guy. And, I like, watched it yesterday the against the Nasties. So yeah. Was, you know, I watched uh, the I watched the Heart Foundation versus the Nasties Mania 7 because it's, you know, that time of year. And I'm watching Brett do the ten punches and not, like, the sterile one, two. He's going, one, two. Two, three, four, five, six, like, just, and Nobbs is just sitting there like, this fucking asshole is beating the shit out of me. And I was like, man, everybody does that, like, four, four time. One, two, three, four, two, two, three kind of punches. And Brett is mauling poor Brian Nobbs. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. And then I saw that gift, and I'm like, maybe I've been looking at this all the wrong way. <laughs> you know what? And I'll tell you, I got bit with Kev syndrome. I had another match on my card that I forgot completely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But that's okay. Uh, I just won't mention it. <laughs> That'll be for you to figure out. The 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 the, the listeners at home. I, I'm sitting here. I'm looking at the list. And I'm thinking, oh, we're at the main. Where is Joe going to work in? This guy and this guy. Well, I, and these so I, two. Yeah. So <laughs> the guys that I drafted, like your Duggan and your Blacktop Bully and your stuff like that. Now, were just to, fi- just to fill up to, as red herrings for who would win the 900. Yes, that I got. But yeah. then yeah. the four guys who I'd assume. <laughs> okay. Right. It was going to be a tag title match of the Nasties versus Quake and Big Bubber. That right. was going to be like your like big fat guy brawl all around the building. And I was probably going to switch the titles, but I don't know. I forgot it. It's on me. Uh, that, was, that was a part of the worldwide taping. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> or that's that's like when that's like when one man gang beat Kensuke Sasaki at Stargate for the US title. <laughs> and it didn't air on TV, but like they aired like two finishes for it, one where one man gang wins and one where Kensuke Sasaki wins, so they could still one in Japan and one in America. Right, 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 right. <laughs> hey, it's like a clash one when they're like, Oh, if Ric Flair and Sting do have a finish in this match, then on standby we have Shane Douglas against Rick Steiner. <laughs> right, I, I like my uh, Brad Armstrong versus Canyon standby match better. Oh man! <laughs> so, um, I was well say, done. I was gonna say, Matt, should we do our own impression of um, the, uh, the viewers' choice? Or can you can you give a like? I'll give a statement for uh, uh, for Radley's show, and then you can give one for Joe's. We could do that, and Marcus and Tim, we apologize for completely stealing your gimmick here. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, but it's imitation is a serious form of flattery. This is true, and I will say, as we're recording this right now, I know we'll get to plugs later, but now last week's episode of Final Wrestling Place, where they build the Good Place WrestleMania card, yes. is top-notch. And as you're listening to this today, once you're done with this show... Go check out Final Wrestling Place because today they're doing the Bad Place WrestleMania card. Oh, I can't wait! Oh, I'm so stoked. All right, so my um, so my pitch why uh, Radley Belmont's first Nitro is the one you should vote for, <clears throat> and that's simple. 
It's uh, three little words. It's called the New Young Crew, the NYC. <laughs> Those guys, look, I know that with the wrestling war coming, you're, you're sick of new generation bullshit. Um, if you watch this first episode of Nitro, you're going to get guys jumping off of balconies of malls. You're going to get, uh, you're going to get Lex Luger and a puffy shirt. Like he's going to maintain like continuity people. God, you're going to get, you're going to get NWA. You're going to get Vader. Think about that guys. Um, folks, people, uh, it's just, you know, there's a, there's a lot of very, uh, wonderful storytelling in that clash of the champions. But, um, uh, you know, the, the, the promoter of my show, uh, doesn't forget any of his matches because they're all that important. So <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. So everybody wants you to vote for the first nitro, uh, September 4th, my sister's birthday. Uh, <laughs> great day. <laughs> Be your vote, uh, for be Monday nitro's birthday too. Let me show you my answer's birthday. That, that, let that be your vote. So if I may, if you're looking for a crew that calls themselves young but includes Paul Orndorff. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in canon. Then <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> maybe the first Nitro is for you. But if you are looking for WCW pre-NWO, the epitome of WCW pre-NWO. Joe Sposo's Clash of the Champions is the way to go. You got Dusty and Dustin against Colonel Rob Parker and Steve Austin. If there's no Hulk Hogan, Dustin and Austin are the top of the WCW card by 1997. So, think about that. Think about how you've got the Rhodes and Austin feud that worked their way up from the bottom of the card to the top. You've got Eddie Guerrero and Macho Man Randy Savage, a main event in any arena in this country. Or mall. Dare I, dare I say, the world. And it's not even the main event here, because you have Sting and Bret Hart. You have Sting, the epitome of 90s cool Sting, up against Bret Hart, the WWF champion. Where else are you going to see that? Are you going to see that when Sabu is jumping off a balcony like an idiot? No. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Are you going to see that when the young crew of Hawk and Paul Orndorff show up? You shut your mouth. Hawk is a national treasure, especially in the Midwest. <laughs> you know that. You want to see a bunch of guys from Minneapolis say they're from New York? Hey, I'm yeah. Looking demo- I'm looking at the demographic here. Come on now. <laughs> the show to choose and you know what Joe's even smart enough to have the black top bully on the show but didn't have him wrestle because he knew it would be detrimental that's right Hey, I, I had John Paul Levesque not wrestle you're welcome <laughs> he just showed up hey guys what I miss <laughs> <laughs> it's his own one man curtain call <laughs> so vote for the clash of the champions the end <laughs> All right, gentlemen, Radley Belmont, Joe Sposto, put your social media out there for people to contact you. Radley Belmont, you first. Uh, my social media is real easy, at Stepdad's Wrestling on everything, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram. But on Twitter, it's just Stepdad's Wrestle. Uh, you can literally put our Stepdad's Wrestling, all one word, into any search engine and will pop up right on the first page. Uh, do not put a space between those first words. I can, do not condone that or anything that comes up when that oh, happens. God. So make sure it's all one word. All right. Okay. You got any, uh, bookings coming up soon? Uh, I just wrestled for test of strength last weekend. Uh, great card. And, uh, in two weeks, uh, on the 17th, I'm wrestling for UWA Elite, and I'll be back at Test of Strength Wrestling next month, uh, date to be determined. Very, very cool. Joe! Uh, Joe Sposto on Twitter, S-P-O-S-T-O. Uh, I do two podcasts a week, uh, three technically. Uh, comic book podcast, Longbox Heroes, drops Tuesday, midnight into Wednesday. Adults with Wrestling drops... Thursday night into Friday, and then at Longbox Heroes After Dark, uh, Friday at midnight. 
All of those can be found at soon to be named network.com. Uh, the only bookings I have coming up are May 21st, May 22nd at the Mahoning Drive-In, uh, Real Rumble 2, uh, the LVAC putting on their shows, Let's Hang Out Adjacent shows, what have you. Uh, I will be doing commentary. Uh, my podcast partner, Adam Van, will also be doing commentary with me, trying to squeeze some other folks in uh, for a shot or two. We'll see how that works out. But uh, come for the wrestling Stay for the movies. Night one is They Live and a Mystery Movie. I don't know if they've announced it yet, but I don't know. What other movie can you really pair with a Roddy Piper movie? You know? Maybe another Roddy Piper movie. Anyway, yeah. night two, <laughs> it's Beyond the Mat and Mr. Nanny, which is the weirdest double bill of wrestling movies of all time. Wow. <laughs> strangest documentaries ever filmed. But nonetheless, uh, check that out. May 21st, May 22nd. Uh, if you search Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, social media, uh, either Mahoning Drive-In or LVAC, you could find, uh, tickets. And they're like, uh, Mahoning, Dr- Mahoning Drive-In has become like this big thing. You know, like drive-ins are back and they were kind of like ahead of the curve. Um, toward the end of the fall, they did like a deal with Bruce Campbell. I was going to say, they had Bruce Campbell there. They're doing something with, uh, Rocky Joe Horror, Bob I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that actually is what got us bumped from our date, was the Joe Bob B- Briggs date. <laughs> and, uh, they could charge a little bit higher of a ticket and get, like, there's people that are coming from, like, all over the world. Not to say that there's not people coming all over the world for the Real Rumble, put on by the LVAC. Um, but there's gonna be lots of surprises, lots of, uh, guests, lots of familiar faces, and Dan Champion. So, buyer beware. <laughs> <laughs> he may or may not dance like he did at Pizza oh, Party's Cake Over. Yeah, that was great. This, that's like one of those things where, like, Vince sees you dance at a party, and you're like, oh, your gimmick's a dancer now. It's like, <laughs> but I'm a cold-blooded uh-huh. killer. No, you dance now. Uh, <laughs> Dan has the best uh, the best rip-off logo in indie wrestling right now with the, uh, with the Dream Team logo. Uh, every time I see it, my heart fills with joy. Um, I was I was watching that. Um taping date last night when they had cake over on and this morning i said to my wife you'll never guess who made an appearance last night <laughs> i said the one the only dancing danny rich goes was it 2002 again <laughs> oh for some of us it never stopped being 2002 you know <laughs> welcome to northeast pa yeah all right matt uh what we got left the uh just uh the are the show plugs right Yes, we do. So now that you've heard the two cards, you can go to at the A show on CKCC and vote for who you think had the stronger card to advance to the semifinals. Um, the winner of this match will go on to face the winner of the Adam Van Jason Diagostino match coming up in a couple weeks. They'll be drafting 1993 ECW. And if I'm remembering correctly, the semifinal in this bracket is 2010 WWE. Is that right, Chris? I think so. <clears throat> one was one was 2010 WWE. The other one was 2002 TNA. <laughs> Basically, like what what Decker wanted to do was give either Dooge or Wade Kruger the most difficult path <laughs> I did, through the I tournament did that he possibly that. could. I was like, if you win this, you are gone through an entire river of hell. <laughs> <laughs> and Dooja Wade Kruger, they'll be our next week matchup here, and they are doing 2000 CZW. They'll be going up against the winner of Chris O'Mealy, founder of CKCC Radio, and George Gatton. I forget what title he currently holds in ISW, but he won it in some internet gaming thing. Oh, it was like a Twitch thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. black. And, and Jeff Cannibal had to mail him the belt. <laughs> <laughs> Because George lives in Austin. <laughs> They're doing 85 WWF. Two oh. guys were up where uh, I don't think that's their strongest suit. So I'm like, let's see how much fun they have with the American Express or the U.S. Express. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of fun with American Express. And those two winners will go on to do 2002 TNA with the finals being 2009 WWECW. That's going to be awesome. Man. It's a little weird to have like 2010 and 2009 like lined up right up against each was other. It like 2009 or was it 2008? It might have been 2008. You have it as 2009 on the on the infographic. Shit! 
alignment. To this. <laughs> well, there's my, still time to change it. You're this is your <laughs> podcast. You're in charge. I was gonna say, you know? gonna say nothing's been set in stone yet. All well, right, that that tweet can be deleted. It's no problem. Um, yeah. Also, when you are done listening to this, and you can also listen to Final Wrestling Plays today, check out By the Numbers, which is going to be going on hiatus. Today I have Hollow Wicked on the show. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Hollow Wicked, good dude, one of the best wrestlers I have ever shared a ring with. Hands down. Uh, lots of good stories to be told. At least I'm hoping so. We're recording it later this week. <laughs> um, so hopefully when you listen to that next week... It's as good as I'm putting it over to me. Also on CKCC Radio, we have a new website, ckccradio.com. You can check out all of our podcasts there. Nerd Table, Stupid Sexy Podcast, all of the above. Um, Chris has a couple more. Now he has the Park Hopper Podcast, where he talks about the Orlando theme parks. Yes, so he's going into detail with that with friends of us. Yes. Joe, what's on the soon-to-be-named network? Uh, I mentioned before, Longbox Heroes, Longbox Heroes After Dark, Add Us with Wrestling, uh, Final Wrestling Place, Puzzle Warriors 3, Profane Arguments, um, I think the last episode of Wednesday Night War might have aired by the time that this aired, so I don't know what's gonna fill that slot, uh, oh. hopefully more Wings on Wings, and hopefully more Porch Talk. <laughs> God, I think Wings sucks, <laughs> like... <laughs> Listen, I've never seen... My only exposure to the TV show Wings is the episode of The Simpsons where they oh, say tonight on Wings. Who cares? Uh, who cares? <laughs> That's my only exposure to the TV show. Yeah. Uh, but I like I like Brett. I like DJ. I like Michelle. I like Doug. And I just like hearing them bullshit about right. something that they seemingly aren't enjoying either, both the Wings <laughs> and the Wings. So I'm getting to hear their pain on a weekly basis. Uh, that drops every Tuesday if DJ remembers to uh, post it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh shit! <clears throat> also, outside of those networks, you can check out the Hooligans of Hops with Irish Kev and Rick, and that's basically them just drinking and talking about drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also the Non Other Sports podcast with Jason and David. They're currently doing their tournament, the best beard in professional sports. Oh, yeah, I voted on that. I was voting on, voting on Bryce Harper yesterday. Um, right now they're doing the MLB one. They're also going to do the NFL, the NBA, and the NHL. That is on Facebook. So I will not be voting because I got rid of that. But you can, right, 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 yeah. you, you, you can vote on I'll, Facebook. I will catch you up. I will catch you up. Um, I only remember – I just listened to it this morning. Do I remember Bryce Harper and Dallas Keuchel, and I can't remember who the other two are. Not off, top, not off the top of my head, at least. Which means either I wasn't paying attention or I was very busy working. One of the two. That's you so, for me. So. so next week here on the A Show, it'll be the Duge and Wade Kruger uh, painstakingly making their Taking way. Taking on the two- dub. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pre-Deej dub. So it's actually better, possibly. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um. I don't know. There's a lot of uh, really weird stuff and people that you've never heard of before and will never hear of again. I can't wait for the wild card of Kurt Angle versus Nate Hatred. All right. There's got to be a Lord Everett DeVoe match in there somewhere, you know? Um, against Ric Flair, of course. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I just spent a, like a six-hour – drive with him, he has a lot of ideas for just the weirdest wild cards you could think I of. I can't so wait. I'm, I'm excited. I'm telling you, the exploding crocodile match, I'm, I'm ready for it. <laughs> what, what was the one I said? I say he had to do, like, Charlie Haas against Zandig or something, because they're both on the roster. You don't yeah, have to burn yeah, a wild card for that. Because <laughs> yeah. oh, the Haas the, brothers were there. Right. Um, so, gentlemen... Uh, Thank you. One of you we will see in about a month. Yep. And, uh, and if anybody else wants to follow us, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Chris Decker IRL. You can find us in general or Matt at uh, the A Show on CKCC on uh, Instagram and on Twitter. And uh, yeah, that was, that was a good show, everybody. And also season four guests that we have lined up include Kevin the Man Graham. Yep. 
and Ed from Pod Van Dam. Oh, 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 oh. oh wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> oh, Ed. <laughs> you guys are in for hell. <laughs> And we were able also to book the boar. Oh, hey, that's a good booking. Yeah. We, yes. We were so talking we, about that. We were talking with it today. The, the Lonely Islands boar on a boat. <laughs> that's next year's mania. It's him just throwing people off a boat. Which is funny because next year's mania is very landlocked in Dallas. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so... Yeah, we have that to look forward to in season four. Um, I guess Ed is going to be something. We'll keep uh, y'all posted with everything once this tournament it, is over. And Mike Roch, I'm still offering a uh, MMA show for you, bud. So with that said, <laughs> Joe right. and Rad, we'll see either one. We'll see one of you in a month, and the other. Thank you for being a part of the tournament. Uh, your parting gift is in the mail. Your consolation prize. <laughs> it's a gift card to Omaha Steaks. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's that's what they give out. Now. That's what they give out now. On like Price is Right and shit. Uh, we're gonna go 1987 Wheel of Fortune. It's a service merchandise gift card. There we go. Oh shit, we had a service merchandise up here. It's a it's a sheets now or something. I I think service merchandise is now the Salvation Army store. Oh oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> oh, we'll Good night, talk. <laughs> Until next week, um, my name is Matt. I'm Chris. And we will see you.